In 1956, director John Ford drew inspiration from the story of a certain Cynthia Ann Parker in his film The Searchers, starring John Wayne and Natalie Wood. Later, in 1990, the fist-toting character in the film Dances with Wolves, starring Kevin Costner, was also inspired by Cynthia Ann Parker. Here's her real story. The year is 1833 in the United States. Little Cynthia Ann was only six years old when her family financed the construction of a ranch they called Fort Parker. The region is certainly beautiful, but also very inhospitable, being in the middle of Indian territory. And so it was that three years later, after the Texas Rangers protecting the fort had returned home, that a band of Comanches and their Kiowa's allies decided to attack the ranch on their territory. The attack was brutal, and the family was practically wiped out. However, the Comanches left with a nine-year-old, blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl, Cynthia Ann Parker, and her younger brother, John. The news obviously caused quite a stir, and the search for a survivor began. And so it was that four years later, in 1840, Cynthia was spotted in an Indian camp on the banks of the Wachita River. The Federals questioned the 13-year-old girl, but strangely enough, she did not respond. Six years later, in 1846, Colonel Leonard Williams thought he had found the girl who was living in a Comanche camp on the Canadian River. The colonel was charged with recovering Cynthia for ransom, but despite his proposal, the tribal elders strangely refused the generous ransom and wanted the young woman to remain among them with good reason. After all these years, Cynthia Ann had become a true Comanche, now called Nauta, and had married one of the tribe's finest warriors, Peter Nukona, the future great Comanche chief. The couple lived in harmony and had two sons, Kwana and Pecos, and a daughter, Topsana. In the spring of 1860, a group of Texas Rangers commanded by Captain Lawrence Sullivan Ross surprised a Comanche hunting camp occupied only by women and a few Mexican slaves. With most of the men away hunting, the Texas Rangers attacked these easy prey and made no bones about it. In fact, it was a veritable massacre. Miraculously, Cynthia managed to escape on horseback, her little daughter Topsana in her arms. Reached and quickly captured by the Rangers, Cynthia was brought back among the whites to Texas, where her uncle, Isaac Parker, recognized her and became her guardian. She was now 34 years old, and for her, the Comanches had become her only legitimate people. She had lived among them for 25 years, having totally adopted not only their way of life, but also their way of thinking. In reality, Cynthia could never get used to the white man's way of life, of which she had become a captive. Three times she tried to escape, but without success. In 1864, her daughter fell ill and died. Cynthia refused to eat and died in 1870. Her son, Kwana, the family's sole survivor, became the last and most important Comanche chief of his time. For a long time, Kwana and his brothers-in-arms refused to join the reserve they were ordered to join. They finally surrendered in 1875 and were placed on a reservation in Oklahoma. Kwana was named Supreme Chief of all the Comanches on the reservation and proved to be a powerful, inventive, and capable leader. After becoming an American citizen, he adapted to life with the whites who had taken everything from him. He went into business successfully and became, it is said, the richest American Indian of his time. 